I've said before that this election is a choice, a choice between economic recovery with the Conservatives and more borrowing, more debt, higher taxes and higher prices with the Liberals and NDP. But this election is also about trust, about whether or not we want to reward Justin Trudeau for breaking his promise and calling an unnecessary $600 million election in the middle of a pandemic. Cette élection porte sur la confiance. This election has to do with trust. Do we want to reward Justin Trudeau for having broken his promise? Do you want to reward him for having triggered a useless election costing $600 million at, during a fourth wave of COVID-19? Justin Trudeau has not talked about the future of our country. He has not provided a plan for Canada, but instead veered into personal attacks and American-style misleading politics in an election he called for himself only. The differences between Justin Trudeau and myself are stark. I grew up in the suburbs. My neighbours were auto workers. My dad worked for General Motors. When Mr Trudeau was partying, and we've all seen the photos, I was doing search and rescue missions in the military. Every Canadian has met a Justin Trudeau in their lives privileged, entitled, and always looking out for number one. He was looking out for number one when he called this expensive and unnecessarily, unnecessary election in the middle of a pandemic. A $600 million power grab. An election that has done nothing to stop the fourth wave. It's only made things worse by taking the government's eye off the ball. That's not leadership. It's self-interest. And it's Justin Trudeau through and through. Where I grew up, you worked hard for everything you had. Even when you didn't have a lot, you always tried to help others. Your character and work ethic would earn the respect of your neighbours. That's my approach to leading Canada's Conservatives. We are here to work hard to earn your support. We're here to earn your votes. Là où j'ai grandi, on devait Where I grew up, we had to work hard. We had to make a living. Even if we didn't have much, we helped each other out with neighbors and the community. Trust, pride, and work well done were important values. That's my approach for directing Conservatives. It's my approach for leading the country. We're going to work hard to win your support. We're here to win your vote. In Justin Trudeau's world, he takes you and your votes, your support, for granted. That's why he called an election in the middle of a pandemic. That's why he was more interested in a power grab than evacuating Canadians and our allies from Afghanistan. That's why he hid public health briefings, because they'd look bad for him. That's why he took his eye off the ball as forest fires raged. Instead of spending $600 million on an election, imagine what that money could have done for our hospitals, for mental health, for border security. Imagine what $600 million represents. That money could have been used to something else rather than elections. A good government would have invested that in our hospitals for mental health, for safety at the borders. At the beginning of the campaign, we expected that Justin Trudeau had have at least a vision for the country. Canadians are disappointed, and rightly so. You'd expect that Justin Trudeau would give a clear vision for the country, some sense that the sacrifice he forced on Canadians would be worth it. Has he? Not at all. He's lunged from one wedge issue to another, dividing Canadians, attacking premiers, blaming others for his shortfalls. Today, I'd plan to talk about maternity and parental leave, about making sure that when parents have children, they get the time they need to adjust to parenthood, to learn and to spend those precious moments with the new members of their family. I wanted to talk about the $1,000 a month that Canada's Conservatives would let parents earn to help them stay connected to the workforce, about how we will expand the Canada Child Benefit to provide expectant parents with payments beginning at the seventh month 
of pregnancy rather than at childbirth. Today, I want to talk about maternity leave and paternity leave. We're going to make sure that new parents have the time to adapt and learn and spend some good time with the family. A conservative government will give $1,000 a month to help parents stay connected to the workforce. We're also going to improve the Canadian child allocation. We're going to give the payments to parents from the seventh month of pregnancy, not just at the birth of the baby. our ideas in Canada's recovery plan about the issues that really matter to Canadians. Every day in this campaign, I've stood up and talked about how we could make Canada a better place. I launched Canada's recovery plan on the first full day of this election because I love this country and I want to tackle the challenges we are facing to secure a brighter and better future. That's the election we should be having. That's the discussion that Canada's leaders owe to the country. That's the discussion you deserve in this election. But Justin Trudeau isn't interested in a serious debate about issues. Because what matters to him isn't maternity leave, your home, your retirement security, your job. What matters to him is his job. Justin Trudeau ne veut pas avoir Justin des Trudeau des does sérieux not sérieux want serious debates on important issues. All that counts for him are not maternity leave, your housing, your safety at retirement, or your job. All he wants is keep his job. That's why he'll say anything to get elected, regardless of the damage it does to our country. That's why he'll promise anything so long as he thinks it will buy him some votes. That's why he'll threaten anything if he doesn't get his way. Don't believe me? Ask Jody Wilson-Raybould. The SNC-Lavalin scandal shredded Mr. Trudeau's reputation as a feminist, as a proponent of reconciliation, as someone we can trust to know the difference between right and wrong. Over the coming days, we must decide whether or not we want to reward Justin Trudeau for breaking his promise and calling an unnecessary $600 million election in the middle of a pandemic. Over the next few days, you are going to decide if yes or no, you're going to reward Justin Trudeau. If you're going to reward him for having broken his promise and for having triggered a useless election that cost $600 million. I didn't ask for this campaign. But nearly every day in this campaign, I've stood up and proposed practical solutions to secure our future and make life better, easier, and more affordable for ordinary people. Friends, I got into politics for one reason. The same reason I served in the Air Force for 12 years. The same reason that in business, I volunteered my time for charitable causes. The same reason I ultimately stood for election to serve my country. My dear friends, I do politics for just one reason, the same reason why I served in the Canadian Armed Forces for 12 years, and the same reason why I was a volunteer for um, not-for-profit organizations, and why I decided to go into politics, and that's to serve my country. Canadians deserve better than a leader concerned only about his own power. But this is a pattern. Day after day, month after month, year after year, the only thing he and the Liberal Party prioritize is their own survival. More of the same spending and debt, $424 million per day, with more of the same on its way. More of the same corruption, more cover-ups, more lies, more entitlement, more being taken for granted, more of the same. Day after day, month after month, and year after year, the only thing that Justin Trudeau wants is to stay in position. Again, more spending in debt, $400 million a day, and nothing's going to change. Always the same corruption, more camouflage, more lying, more arrogance. Always the same thing. Justin Trudeau often wants to pretend that this is 2015, that he's not running on his record 
but on distant memories from the past. Well, it's not 2015, Mr. Trudeau. I am a new Conservative leader. And the Justin Trudeau of 2015 is not the Justin Trudeau of 2021. In 2015, I disagreed with him, but I could respect him. I could agree when he talked about what unites us rather than divides us. I could understand when he talked about a better future Canada could have. I could appreciate when he talked about healing the country's rifts, not exploiting them. Where is that Justin Trudeau? Where is that guy? What would the sunny ways Justin think of the Prime Minister we see today? The one who is clinging to power by dividing the country, fostering fear and division, sowing mistruths and misinformation wherever he goes. The one who says he's a feminist, but pressured a woman to lie to cover up his corruption. The one who preaches honesty and transparency while funneling cash to Liberal insiders. The one who talks about reconciliation while suing Indigenous children. The one who talks about the environment while pumping record emissions into the air. The one who says one thing and then immediately does the opposite. I'd say he's all talk and no action, but this is worse. A person so blinded by his own ambition that he can't see the rot in his own party. A man who is not a feminist, not an environmentalist, not a public servant. A man who's focused solely and squarely on himself.